Hi. Hope you enjoy this game. This game was played about an hour ago. I've already done this session. And uh, I found that the H file was hidden with my image, which you don't want that, do you? Not really. And so anyway, here we are in the 100 acre wood and Tigger is about and here we go. So Chess for Tigers is a great book. I do love it. And so I try to play like that as often as I can. Uh, so anyway, here's this game. It's not long. Uh, and it is against my fellow uh, player from Holland. I don't know the player, but my opponent is 2055 from the Netherlands, not Holland, uh, from the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, 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 it was a good game, I think. So I did say that to him. So here we go. E3, the Vant Kuss opening, which is probably quite a good one to um, play against someone from Holland or the Netherlands. Netherlands. Uh, what I do like, by the way, is this. And so I'm getting the sort of like the color of the Dutch flag here with the red, blue, white, okay, or French flag, etc. Or we've got the colours of the New Zealand flag anyway. Stop rambling. I do it well, don't I? G6. So I find that this system against the Vant Cruz opening is quite good because it prevents my knight going to E5, the D6 move. And also Bishop G7 is quite reasonable too. The, I call it Fianchetto. But... I have heard other pronunciations of it, but I'm sticking to Fianchetto. It's the one I was taught to say it like. Anyway, knight d7 and bishop e2, just keep it simple. Here's this move, a bit naughty. Okay, I'm a bit naughty, knight g5. But this idea is one of my ideas in this opening, is to... Um, to look at the square e4 uh, and to want to have black not having some form of control over e4. Here, black's got an eye on e4, haven't they, with the bishop? So this bishop has an eye on these squares and even f3 and g2. Ouch. So I... Um, Play this move, knight g5. Now, I know, I know that I say to develop. And uh, yes, I'm very, very naughty here by playing this in the first place. If h6, ah, oh, sorry. If h6, then bishop f3, and then probably bishop f3, and then knight f3. Now, that looks very silly because... I've got rid of my dark, my light squared bishop, which is my better bishop. But I don't think, unless e6 happens, I don't think that f5 is going to be stopped soon from pl being played by white, even at the expense of a pawn, as that will open up my uh, bishop diagonal. Okay, so anyway... That said, knight g5, knight f6, bishop f3, you see. Bishop f3, queen f3. Now we have castle and knight d2. I'm being a wee bit well behaved, but not completely. Knight d2, h6, knight g, e4. So, very simple. And here comes knight e4, knight e4. And knight f6. So it's your move now. What would you play next? And if you want a clue, it's the best move on the planet. Okay? It's the best move on the chessboard, I mean. It's the best move on the chessboard. It is, of course, f5. 
So F5 and now this poses a wee sort of like a, I want to just uh, maybe play FG6, FG6. And then I've got this whole kind of for black on E6. Plus black has these two uh, pawns, okay? These two pawns and these two pawns. Okay, there are three pawn islands. Whereas I've only got one island and two islands. Okay, if you bear with me learning the way to do this, like some of them do it perfectly. So thereby I've got a, at least a slight advantage. Uh, and this is kind of a technical game, but it has of course because I'm playing a theme of tactical as well. So this is quite a thematic um, game or it's bordering onto positional play, but I'm also breaking the rules of development and all that sort of thing. So here's G5. So this actually aids my, um, my uh, attempts at playing this game. Now notice the bishop has now a better view than it did with the pawn on e4. This pawn here that's now on f5. And so um, if I had got rid of any bishops then it would probably be not a bad idea to get rid of my white squared bishop because now this pawn is in the way of this white squared bishop isn't it really. So here's bishop d2, so I'm developing. So I do have to behave myself somewhat. And here comes the capture of knight, a pair of knights off the board, so no more knights left. We both have, of course, a dark squared bishop. We both have now a dark squared bishop. And... Uh, we both have a dark squared bishop and a pair of rooks each and a queen and you know seven pawns. Here's bishop f6. So this invites a move for me which uh, might involve me moving my bishop again. So what do you think that is? So what's the next move that you'd play? Or well, what's the next move you think I played? is h4. Now this is softening up black's kingside resolve and uh, I, I want to swing my queen to here and thereby I'm attacking this once, twice, three times. Okay, so that's what I want to do. And so black has to defend this. Now, notice this square here, e6 for black. Uh, white has this pawn on e7 under restraint. Because if it moves either to e5 or to e6, then this capture will happen. Okay, so this pawn will capture here. And then... As well, the queen can capture if the pawn from f7 captures. <laughs> so um, here's king g7. So as promised, uh, I play um, I play hg5. And hg5. Now bishop g5. What about bishop g5? It's not terrible, but I don't know if it's very good for black. Anyway, hg5. Now play queen g4. Now, now you can see that I'm uh, restraining this pawn still, and also I'm attacking this pawn on g5 twice with my bishop and queen. 
there's the Dutch colours again. Sort of. Kind of a crimsony colour, isn't it? But that happened accidentally. So, what happens now? You might say, well, I'll defend the pawn. Now, if we d defend the pawn on g5, so if we defend the pawn with e6 or e5, then I've already said that I will play f e6. Okay? What happens if we play king here? Okay? To defend the g5 pawn. And then if queen h3, then to check the king, then we could possibly get uh, after king g7 again, back to where it is now. Queen h3 to h5, threatens bishop g5 again. But then we are not, uh, then we're not restraining e6 anymore because the queen is now on the square here. So, but what happens if um, king h6 anyway? What happens if the king moves here? What do we play for white? It's reasonably simple. Um, very good things to see in chess is uh, these sorts of moves. Is, of course, queen h4 will be check. Um, and then the king, the pawn cannot capture the queen because it would be check with the king with the bishop on d2, checking the king on h6. So um, black sort of is going to lose a pawn, really. So if we go king h6, okay, then we can all see this, I hope, as queen h4 check, king g7, bishop here takes the pawn. And then we're threatening bishop takes sort of thing. Uh, if rook h8, maybe that's okay. Then we have this, and we have, or oh, we have queen g4, gf6, queen g4, king f8, and as long as that pawn's not, not out of the way, we don't have to worry about rook g8. So, and just rook a e1 sort of thing, and I feel this is quite a good wee position for white. White remains a pawn up. Uh, black, white could actually uh, just triple on the e file if they were allowed to. Uh, look at these pawns. Look at these pawns. <laughs> look at this pawn. Look at this pawn. Look at this pawn. Boom, boom. So, I mean, they're very weak, aren't they? Whereas I'm still left with two islands. So, and a pawn up. And a double pawn for for black and an isolated pawn. Okay, black's got some extra open files, but how are you going to get onto them uh, easily without? Um, oh, I mean you can get on that one, David. So um, here we go back to the drawing board, back to queen g4. So here comes e5. So, of course, as previously mentioned, I play fe6, and here we have fe6. Because um, black's really in, a tr in, a, in trouble if they don't do something about rook f6, I think. Queen e6. So, now we have um, black's move which is queen e7, okay, so queen e7 is black's move. Can white play rook f6? Because the defender of the queen on e7 is defended by the bishop, so can we just lift it? With rook f6. No, we cannot. As if we play rook, um, if after queen e7 we play rook f6 now, then not rook f6 or queen e6, not rook f6, 
not queen e6, as rook e6 will be great for white. White's a piece up and a pawn. And got the better position. But here we would have after rook f6, sorry, here we would have after rook f6, I've just shown you the next move, uh, we have queen f6. And now white is in the lost position. Black actually is threatening queen f2 check. So if queen d7, then just rook here and white's um, very lost in the woods, in the great acre wood, 100 acre wood. Queen here, queen here, uh, king here or here. Uh, so we'll just go here. Queen takes bishops one, but we have rook h8. Check. Queen h3. Rook h3. Check. And then we have um, this, which is quite sad. And we can probably just about do this now. I don't see any reason why not. And if king g4, then queen g4. And here we have the king back here and rook h7. Check. So um, anyway, that said, here I played the move I've already shown, which is to um, keep the queens on, because quite often in chess we come into a position that uh, we have to decide whether we want to swap our queens off or not. Uh, and with time, uh, our instinct can get a little bit better, but it's not exactly great, my instinct, in that regard. Okay, so here I've got queen d5. So here's rook a e8. So everyone can see the next move, easy to see, because it involves uh, bringing all the party to the game, which is, of course, rook a e1. Okay, so now... We have queen d7, and so now what does black get met with? Of course, uh, there's something free here for white. And white playing a Dutch person um, likes to grab a little bit of material here and there. So here comes bishop g5, rook e1. What's your move now? What do you want to play now? What's your next move? Rook e1 or bishop f6 check? I played rook e1. Okay, now queen g4. So white is uh, having to watch out here because black's coming into the game with their queen. Their queen is quite powerful, powerful, powerful on the square uh, because she's actually looking down on the square here. Uh, so I get a little bit liberal, I will say, or a bit easy going about this position. I play bishop f6, as I have 131 left for 141. Rook f6, and this might have been played a little bit of a, in a bit of a hurry, as rook e7 check. So, after king f8, what do you think I should play? So we'll play king f8. What do you think I should play now? And as always mentioned, I do not say that it's the best move on the planet. What's your move now? What do you think you'd like to play now? Because um, I have to be very careful here because firstly, blacks are taking my rock with their king. They can take it. Secondly, black threatening queen d1 check and rook h6 check, which isn't looking very nice for me. So what do I do next? After king f8, what do I do? And I came up with this move, queen e4. 
Now this just offers a, a swap of the, the queens. There she is. I'm just offering to swap her. Okay. And thereby I would be, uh, I would be, how many pawns have I got? Two pawns up. And a rook and pawn in game. I think I might even be able to do okay there. So, after queen e4 came queen d1 check. So I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to play king up to h2 because then I'm going to be in trouble, I think. So I play queen e1, which is now, it's interesting in chess that the king cannot take the rook because it's check, but I can't take the king because it's checked to my king. But I find it interesting. That's all, nothing more than that. Here we have um, queen to h5. So the queen's hanging around, and now I've got uh, a simple couple of moves to play here. So firstly, um, I want to be very careful of this move here, rook h6. And I also need to remember I'm looking after that rook here with my queen on e1. So now... I play another materialistic move, which is, of course, this move here, rook a7. So here, uh, white is threatening a couple of things, depending which way I want to go. Maybe I'm threatening here, check. Oh, I'll do that now. Okay, hold on. Check and queen checkmate. Or queen takes rook. Or rook a8 check after queen e7 check. So black, um, I think the, the best for black to do here, excuse me, I think the best thing for black to do here, I thought before, was rook f7 after rook a7 capture i thought here that rook f7 would be better here and here i've got rook a8 check this forces king g7 queen g3 now what happens what's the wee trick for white that white can play if queen g6. So what's a wee tactical um, thing here that you can play for white? Is of course the following move. A drive in away sacrifice from the protection of the queen on g6 and any other move from black now is futile. So king g8 and queen g6. Now, the only thing is, even though I've got, uh, I would still be two pawns up. Um, if this pawn wasn't here now, okay, let's just imagine this pawn's not here, okay? So let's just mark that pawn as red. Then black would have rook g7, and then they would have a little bit more of a chance, but they're still going to lose the king of pawn in game, if, if you get what I mean. Because after queen g7, or maybe queen g2, uh, offering to um, move my king one square up uh, instead of black. So I'm a little bit square head. Square head. If I take the rook, okay, then the king is one square closer to the center, which might help but it probably will not aid uh, Black's game. Because with this pawn off, which we're saying this pawn's off, um, these pawns here on the queen side, this pawn will come here, and here will happen. The, sorry. 
This pawn will happen here, and this pawn will become a pass pawn. And then these pawns, after that happens, um, will be connected connected for my king to just go up there and guide them, sort of thing. I'm just talking really basically. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this wee session for you. I might bring some live games soon. I'm not sure. Uh, it's a bit scary because sometimes I can even swear. Um, so anyway, thank you for watching and all the best with your chess. I hope you enjoy it and uh, all the best. Bye for now.